If you haven't already, please also subscribe to us on Apple, Spreaker and Spotify. Just type in Brawl Boxing and you'll find us there. Thank you. Hello folks and welcome back to the Brawl Boxing Podcast. I'm Kieran McCourt and I'm joined by co-hosts Colin McGuigan and Ryan McLaughlin. So guys, sorry we haven't been as consistent with the podcast over the last couple of weeks. Ryan's been uh, working hard to get Tyson Fury on the podcast down in Morgan. So, um, <laughs> it's in progress. Yeah, we've been very busy. But we're hoping over the next couple of weeks that we'll be back on track whenever Ryan gets into his uh, five-star penthouse in Manchester. But um, we're really delighted today to welcome Irish amateur star and new top rank signing and condom boxing signing, Kurt Walker. Kurt, how are you doing, mate? What's happening, lads? All good. I'm in London now. Fuck train, lads. Wrecked. Mick ditched you. Mick ditched me. I'm in his room now doing this. So fuck <laughs> are you? <laughs> hey, I'm how you? Up on. How you? How you find in London? Good, uh, it's tough, like, but nah, I'm enjoying it. You know, I like being in camp and learning, so uh, I'm enjoying it. Had you, had you ever lived away, though, before? Just Dublin, uh, but Dublin Dublin felt longer. Like, I've been here since Sunday, it just flies in Dublin. You're there Tuesday to Friday, and it feels like we're three weeks. I don't know what it is. I think it's because you're in a hotel, like. Mm. See, see, when that, you're training alongside Mick, is he, is, is he in, as intense as what people say? <laughs> He's a nightmare, lot. That's, <laughs> that's why I'm enjoying it now over here, because he's not here. <laughs> like, what would he do? He just expects me to do everything he can do, but he's fitter. He's not any fitter than I am, just the way he is. I'm not that fit. Yeah. I'm just that no lad. He, when he goes fat, he always has a six pack. <laughs> I'd get a six pack about six days before a fight. <laughs> you know what? Joe would get you fit walking up them hills in Fort William Golf Club when you were doing it. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know, remember, for people that didn't realize, me, him, and Jamie, me, Kurt, and Jamie went and done, uh, played golf for the Oscar Knox. <laughs> Uh, you didn't get the invite and um <laughs> you know the first I, I didn't have clubs and jamie was like you need clubs blah 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 he was like i was like sweet no problem and i was like on the first tee went to swing the driver came back snapped in half before i hit the ball right a few weeks later carl frampton pops up on my phone another <laughs> name drop by the way another name drop where's where's my driver you bastard <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll actually get that. We'll get that screenshot in another video. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm getting that fixed at the minute. Yeah, I'm sure you had a few scrapes after you were in the bushes most of the days. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was doing that just so Jamie could have you one on one saying you to come and box, and I was just being nice. <laughs> are you actually? Are you actually any good at golf? Both of us. I play it like, but I'm not very good at all. Like, so I just enjoy playing it. Like, he's a, he's a bandit. Is what you call in golf. He <laughs> pretends he's not bad. He, he pretends he's brutal and he's better than what he is. And then he basically asked, takes all your money. It was only the four threes I was hitting them with the captain on the green every time. Like, I don't know what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> you were good. You know what that reminded me of as well, Ryan, but when you were saying about about training with Mick when he was training with Mick, remember you in, uh, was it Pure Gym or <laughs> the gym group when he came oh, in? Oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Where was this? Remember, yeah, it was were, no, it was in uh, the he was making weight for the failure, and you were in front of him on yeah. the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> he was in front of Mick on the treadmill, and like they have this competitive thing through Warzone and stuff. And Ram was like, I just can't get off, like, I can't get off. <laughs> he no. came back to us, he looked like he'd just seen a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Would you know what it was? I, the first week here, we, we went out and done like I never even run that much, like, I'd run five, six K max, like, so he says, We'll do an eight K. <laughs> I said, Happy enough, it was steady enough, like, but. It was down to the last K and a half, and there's a fellow across the road ran past us, and he was shaming. <laughs> Mick took off. He never even caught him too, but he was away gone. <laughs> you didn't catch him. Out the street. No way. Do you know what it is? It's because so, like, I was running by myself, and he was obviously making weight. So we had Harlem and all, and Adam and all around him, like at the other side of the gym. Uh, and I could just see him looking over at me on the treadmill, and I was like. <laughs> Fuck, I'm gonna have to properly do this here. Like, do you know what I mean? Just felt like I was judged to like the eyes burning in the back of my head. Ran straight to the hospital after. <laughs> before we obviously, Kurt, you're you're uh preparing to move on to the next level now. But um, before we get that, I want to know how you first got into boxing because I don't think there was many fights in Lisbon, was there? It's a bit posh there. <laughs> it's not posh, lad, but <laughs> boxing clubs, there's actually two boxing clubs in Ireland. But mm-hmm. I was doing Taijutsu from for a few years till I was about 10 or whatever and then 
the Tenshi Street Club moved to carried off, so I had no way to get there. And then beside the Tenshi Street Club was the boxing club, so I just down there and there, and that was it. <laughs> Mad, like, not even know <laughs> where to I really just had nothing else to do. Were you good originally, like, early on? I was all right. Like, I was, I never won anything, really. Like, but it was, I was there, there about most of the time, you know, and then I didn't even know you had to make weight when I was 11. I was at 27 kilos, I think. I just turned up the way and didn't even know anything. Yet my breakfast before and just that was it. Like kept getting bit. <laughs> but I, re- I remember when I was a kid, um, I wasn't any good really. Like, but I boxed and there was a fellow in my class in school, um, and he boxed and I think he actually boxed me. And I remember him saying at that young age that like you you stood out. And I think he might have played Gaelic or something. I don't think he was too. Oh, McGlynn, he's called. You know. I know, man. Uh, he was in my yeah. school. Was he in your school? Yeah, uh, he, he used to say about how good you were at that young age, and I didn't really know you at that time. So you must have uh, just been good at a young age, just naturally. Now. I was good, like, but I was never. I never won the All Irelands till my third or fourth year, like, and then yeah. like so good, but I just I was never, never, never the best, like. So I just kept their truck, and like, and it all worked out. Kept their truck. <laughs> <laughs> so, but was there? You know, way you hear boxers sort of, they sort of say growing up they wanted to be like. At whatever an Olympian or a world champion or whatever pro did you at what age did you start thinking right I, I could sort of make a career out of this um probably probably youth level you know I started cleaning up at youth level went to the worlds one of Ron's moved up weight then the next year and won a silver at the Europeans and I got pushed straight in funding I was like but then there was Michael and all and I was just I would have went to Dublin Tuesday to Friday I was only just turned 18 I never really drank till I was about 18 so I'd have just trained Tuesday to Friday and then went out Friday and Saturday and back down to Dublin, like, and I wasn't going anywhere. I was just training and going down and sparring and going back out. It was lovely. Like, fans. And I was on like 18,000 a year, like, and then when you're 18, no one else had no money. Everyone was getting the AMA, so it was handy. I was just going out every weekend. Was and that 18,000 tax free as well? Aye. Uh, lovely. So, <laughs> oh my God. And you used to spend about 30 quid a night out back then, so it was ticking. Oh, 100%. <laughs> now, I remember, I, I remember you sort of coming on the scene, and then obviously there was sort of like the passing of the the torch even when Mick and stuff turned up, turned over after Rio, but sort of seemed like sort of 2017 when you won the bronze and then 2018, the Commonwealths and then the Europeans and the EU championships and stuff. Like it, it really, really, really started accelerating for you. What, what did I, that sort of do for your confidence around that time? Just massively, you know, whenever I was sparring with Mick, obviously he was world champion. And I was doing well sparring him. Like me and Mick used to be sparring all the time. Um, I just knew like, but, I could definitely do things, and then I had plenty of injuries in, in between them years as well. When I was while I was winning the medals, so I knew there was more left in me. So it just kept getting better and better. Like it was just crazy how it all just happened so quick. Was but there even one, years in the making too. Was there any of them tournaments in particular that, that was most like you were most sort of nervous about going over to? Just majors because you're fighting for your funding. You know, if you lose, you've no money, and then if you no money, you can't really go down. Like, I, I never won any medals in multi-nations. I only won medals in the big tournaments, so... If you don't win, you can't be going to Thompson's on a Friday <laughs> and Saturday. It doesn't have to be a Friday, do you know what I mean? <laughs> My first Irish seniors, um, the first ones I won, they're on over every three weeks. They're on for three weeks, like... So I fought the Friday, every Friday for three weeks. I fought the Friday and then went to Belmont on the Saturday. Next Friday, fought in the semis, well, the Belmont on the Saturday. <laughs> Next Friday, fought in the final, won it. That was each arm, like... And I'll never do it again, like, but it was just pure stupidity. Like, <laughs> people, people in sport have like them mad superstitions. Do you know, if it works once, they'll just keep I, I do be like that too, you know. You still have them now? I uh, but not, not for going to Belmont, like, that's <laughs> different. <laughs> what, what would your superstitions be now? He, he goes to the alleys now. <laughs> <laughs> After that top rank money, <laughs> I call him boxing money, he's chilling. <laughs> In terms, like if I'm at the European Games or the Olympics or whatever, if I do one thing or each food at a certain time, then I win. I'll do the same thing this day. Fight. Like, yeah. but it's hard now the program because I've no thing. There's no experience, so I'll just have to. If I win my first fight, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Now. You just have to do a brawl boxing interview each fight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just got gonna ask her about whenever COVID hit and with the Olympics and stuff. Um, obviously you had the premature birth of your daughter. Yeah. You, I seen you. I seen you post about that. I think it was yesterday, was it or today? today. I messed yeah. up. Yeah, today. What did that do for your mindset coming off such a high then at that point? And then obviously you know with your daughter and stuff. I didn't even, didn't care about boxing one bit. I probably didn't train for between four and five months, like and that's whenever everyone was playing the PlayStation lockdown, playing Call of Duty, drinking, just drinking every day. And it was in a like I was actually comfortable in what I was doing because I had no 
I had nothing to do and I was happy with that. Like I had nowhere to be or nothing to do. And I, I liked that because it's probably the first time in my whole life I ever had that where I could just get up and do what I wanted to do. Obviously not go about anywhere, but it was just handy for me. And then obviously that happened with my daughter and then it's hard, you know, I was driving to the hospital every single day and I was in that routine then. So I was happy enough doing that because I knew there was going to come a time when she was going to come out. But then boxing, I couldn't, I couldn't have heard less about boxing at all, to be honest with you. Yeah. It was just, it, it was irrelevant to me. It was a blessing that the Olympics were postponed then because obviously you wouldn't have been able to go then if it hadn't no. been. The sec- like if everything was no COVID, the second qualifier would have been in May when she was born. So I wouldn't have went to that second qualifier because like, it all happened so quick. And the last thing you ever expect to happen, especially for me, I had no clue what, they, what even premature babies were really like. I knew a small amount about it, but I didn't know. I remember her being born and it says, I think it was on the phone. I was like, eh, I think she's go- they're going to have to keep her here for about three weeks. I didn't know she was in. She had to stay for three months. I just thought to be there for three months, get better, and come out. Like I was clueless. So and it's just mad the way it works. At, at what point then were you able to start getting her head on the straight and narrow and like knuckle down again? <clears throat> just whenever she came out, no, everything was good, no, and then everything was coming back at the kind of same time. We were starting to do wee bits of training here in, in Ulster, kind of doing stuff, and then I don't think I don't know if we went down. We went to training camp then in the end of the year in Italy. And then it started getting bad again. I was like, I'll just go along with things. Whatever happens, happens here. Like, thankfully, it actually worked out for me. They, they say when, as a sportsman as well as an athlete, like when you have a kid, like your whole mindset changes. You're not just doing everything for yourself. You're doing it for your, your daughter. Um, does that, did that completely change it for you as well? Did that just give you extra motivation then going into it? I, I when I put the camp in for the Olympics, you know, that was that was that was my main goal. You no, know, just motivate me. Her was, I think it helped me a, a, a huge lot, like because I hadn't boxed competitively in fourteen months, fifteen months from from before the Olympic Games. So, mm-hmm. and I went in there, probably had the best performances in my life, and it was I think it was down to her. You know, the motivation that brings you, like, one hundred percent. You obviously you went there, obviously went there to the Olympics and all. What was that whole experience like for you? Was it was it nerve wracking getting that flight to Tokyo? Like, you know, sort of, I don't know, sort of half guessing what's what it's going to be like. You know, no crowds there as well. It's got, it was a totally different Olympics to what other people would have been used to. Nah, it was ticket lad. We were first class. <laughs> 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 it was the best night of my life. That is epic. What films do you watch? You launched that. I can't even remember. Huh? <laughs> so it was probably just watching old shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's epic. I didn't even remember. It just takes your mind off things like senior fan first class, like no, but there there must be Kurt, like there there must be a certain level of intensity that comes with the Olympics is like a different level to anything you've experienced. Commonwealth is one thing, Europeans and stuff, but when you're representing your nation at the Olympics and you know, like especially especially in Ireland, there's so much, so much focus on the boxing. Do you know what I mean? It's our most successful sport. Did you did you feel the weight like of the of the pressure on your shoulder? I definitely did. Like we were, we weren't uh, expected to do much, you know. And I think we over, like, well, we we knew what we were going to do, but to a lot of people, we overachieved. Um, it was just that you, the, your last thing you're in your head is going out and get beat the first fight. That's the worst, your worst nightmare. Like, and that's just that's what plays in your head. It's just time. Like you just can't. A week before you start thinking about it, it's, some people think about it four weeks before, which I think drains you, and that that's the reason for defeat most of the time. But it's learning how to block away the energy, the bad energy that you don't need. And just, I don't know, just trying to focus on positive things. Well, what were you thinking? And then speaking of that, when you fucking drew your first fight, the world number one gold favourite, right. what were you thinking? You were like, fuck's sake. No, I, I beat the Spaniard and then I came out. And I, I don't look at the draw now whenever I'm in big championships because I don't want to see who's fight next because I, I want to be concentrating on the, the main goal, the, the first fella. And uh, I kind of see my name at the top of the sheet. And it goes number one seed is always at the top of the sheet. So I was in my head, I was thinking, I bet you I'm fighting this cunt. And then I get out of the ring and I says, Who am I fighting? And John says, I don't know. And I was like, You do know? <laughs> <laughs> is it the world champion? I think so. And I said, I fuck him, man. I was buzzing for it though. Yeah, I mate, mean, that was when I seen you drew him, I was like, Oh no. I was <laughs> like, like, because that's such a top, like, that's the sort of guy you want to meet. Like, a lot of people, I'm sure, I'm sure like boxers have different mindsets and it's like, I can beat everyone. But there, I'm sure there's a lot of people would be thinking like, right, if you can avoid him till the final, uh, I'll be happy with a silver medal. Do you know what I mean? Was your I'm confidence? Gonna, did you have complete confidence you were going to win it? I just talked myself into that. I was like, this boy hasn't got a fight yet. He's going to be hanging. I was like, if I get beat, I've been beat by a world champion. Like, so I can't really lose. Mm. You no, know, like, so 
it's like I'll be a big, I'll be a bit the best possible person. So I just talked myself in the night and I'll be all right. And I went in, worked out. Like, did you just be zoned in? No, it's mad how quick it goes. Like, John was like, This is the best friend your you need this needs to be the best friend of your life. Get in the second. And I came back from the second, he's like, This friend needs to be the best friend of your life. Forget the last year. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. He's come now too. You you just get stronger and stronger. Yeah. Just from Perfect. speaking to you, you, you look like you'd be more nervous on a 1v1 with uh, Jamie Conlon on the final hole. Like, <laughs> 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 like, literally madness. Because I on a game day, I don't know if it's different for you. Like In training, I'd have bundles of energy before I go out and, and train. And then on a game day, I feel so much more leggier. And I think it's in your mindset, you know, thinking about the match and a little yeah. bit of extra nerves. Do you have that when you're like going into fight? I get nerves. I, I just hate the feeling, you know. I think yeah. every boxer kind of gets it. Like sometimes you just think, "Man, I'm not doing this ever again." Like, yeah. And then you get out of the ring, you're buzzing, you're jumping, the adrenaline's <laughs> going through. But I hate that feeling before. It never gets, it never goes away. I think it, yeah. I'm a, it's the worst for it too because you're fighting for everything. Like you could just be, you could be retired in a month if you get bit because everyone forgets about you. Yeah, yeah. It's just mad. Like there, mu- there must be as well. Like going b- going back to what I was saying before, even about the pressure, which sort of makes amateur worse. It's like pro, you have like your own fans, and then that's it. Yeah. Amateur, yeah. you have like the country. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's like a it's like a foot an international football or something. It's like that. It's like you have the country all behind you, and you have to do it on your own. And yeah. Like, so that that's that's the extra pressure. Everyone's relying on medals, and it's coming down to the last like we're the quarterfinals. Where there's not many people left. And you're saying, "Fuck me, I'm gonna have to do this." Like, <laughs> no one's gonna. Okay. Sorry, can can we just go back there? Whenever you were fighting the American, right? You get out of the ring, you beat the Spaniard. When you get in, you fight the American. He's number one seed. Did you know you were beating him during it? Or did Mix, the whole thing with Mick previously, did that come into your head that maybe you would get done over by the judges? Or did you just, you knew you beat him? Against the American? Yeah. Um, nah, he, he destroyed me the first round, the American. Like, and then that, but that, our game plan was he was going to be sharp the first round because the spot him. I know what way he gets on. He's very sharp. He's a fast job and all. And, uh, Came back first round, all judges lost. He says, Sure, I've nothing to lose now. Go out and do it. And then I went out, picked up the pace. I thought I won the second convincingly. I only won a 3 2. And then mm. in my head, I thought, I didn't know it was 3 2. I don't think at the time. I thought I just, because he said you won the round. So I thought that should have been a 4 1 or a 5 0. So I went out the last round and picked up it again. And I thought I just showed him the last round as well. And I won the two rounds out of three. But it's just he got the first one a 5 0. It's the way amateur boxing works. You know, it, it doesn't really make sense, like, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's such a it, it puts so many people off as well. Amateur boxing because then you've 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 robberies, which is one thing. Then you've just fucking you, like rules that don't <laughs> rules that don't make like, sense at all. I, mine wasn't a robbery; it was just that's what I mean. It's it's just a dud rule. It's like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's just it's a stupid way the system works, and it's just I don't know. So we'll fast forward, fast forward a few months on after that. You came home. Obviously, there was automatically a lot of talk about is Kurt going to go pro, whatever. And then you sort of, I don't know, did you go around a few different coaches? Like, how did you end up with Booth? Oh, I was just talking away to Mick, and I says, I was talking about Jamie as well, and I just says, sure, we'll go over and try a thing with you. We'll try out a few gyms, we'll just see what happens. Um, but I just came over here and I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed being around Mick, being around the setup. We're staying in this apartment here, everything's close to the gym. I just I just liked it, and I says, sure, I'll just stay here. I'm happy enough. Like, Did you did you like the way Booth as well as style, with the style of fighters? Because like, is that yeah. something you have to think about when you're when you're switching over to the pros? Yeah, definitely. Like, my um, I have I have a very a big amateur style, you know, for doing it for so long. So it's going to take me a, a while to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Even Michael was saying to me like it took him nearly two years, mm-hmm. when he was a top amateur. So I, I'm prepared to do that change, you know, and take my time. I'm in no rush. Like I'm only 26. There's plenty. There's plenty of time to go. But yeah, I just like the way the gym's set up. You no, know, it's not. The training's mental. It's very hard, but it's not too intense where you're. Whereas amateur boxing, you're doing things every day. You have to get it right. You know, you're in doing a session. Then you might not do an hour technical session for a few days. So it gives you time to take everything in. Oh, you've literally went from straight into the pros where like you're working in one of the best gyms in England, in the yeah. UK, and one of the best trainers. So that's obviously only going to help you. And then obviously the experience that Mix had to go through where he's obviously went into the pro game and then obviously his was a lot was in the limelight. So you're being judged straight away off the start. Does he give you any, cause you're obviously a big name coming from the, uh, the amateur straight into the pros. People are going to be excited to watch your fight. Is, uh, is he give you any sort of advice sort of going into your first fight? Yeah. Well, I was actually talking with Jamie earlier. You know, we we're talking about 
when the debut will be, whether it'll be the side of Christmas or just after, I says, listen, I'm new to this game. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to take on any advice. If I have to wait a few months to get ready, I'll get ready. I don't want to go out and look stupid just for the sake of Russian fights. Mm-hmm. I want to be in the best possible shape and I want to learn. Like, it's, it's a big transitional period into the programme. A lot of things are different. Change in style. Like, I'm going to keep my my good attributes, but there's a lot to change. You know, it's it's a mad game. Mm-hmm. Is there is there any... Obviously, you're not, as you say, there, you're not looking ahead or anything, but is there any long-term goals? Like, like, is there anywhere you're thinking, fuck, I'd love to sell out the Odyssey or... Windsor Park. He does Northern Ireland away, home and away, don't you? He travels uh, away for away games as well. Way. I went to the Euros in France, like, but I went to the match. I walked out the other day at half time in the match. No way. <laughs> uh, what game? Must, it must have been the one before Italy. I am. Um, <laughs> Lithuania, was it? Yeah, yeah Lithuania, yeah. So yeah, it was Windsor then. Windsor would be a big one. I would love to fight Windsor uh, in the summer now in about five years. Like that would do me rightly. Does does Lisburn have any gaffes you could my house? <laughs> yeah. The Omni, the Omniplex. <laughs> the Omniplex. <laughs> <laughs> swimmer car park. Yeah, there's not much in there. Like, I don't think so. Anyway, you wouldn't get that. But nah, I would fight anywhere in Belfast though, so I'm hoping to get my own show or fight on the show here and next year and get the ball run because a lot of my people who support me you know, probably haven't watched me box live since the Irish seniors back in 2017 because I'm always fighting abroad. So it'll be good for them to see it as well. Like, oh, it would be unbelievable I, for you in a few years. Like you and Peter McGrail, if, you, I, if, if you're cross were to keep sort of langing. Like, yeah, no, I think Peter's a great fighter. Like, but I think he's a bit lighter than me. It depends what way I fight at. But no, that would be, I would definitely be interested in the fights like that in the future, especially fights with Duke Regan as well. I want to fight him too and get him back. Does it excite you though? Because you see the likes of Frampton return, like the Northern Ireland fans, they haven't got anybody to sort of, you know, uh-huh. follow uh-huh. now in boxing. And you're obviously that next one now. And you're, you know, yourself, Frampton, the nights he's had, the Northern <laughs> Ireland fans, they, they, they love their boxing too. And it's like, they'll be all over that. And do you think, like, you could have, you could sell out Odysseys, you could sell out Windsor Parks eventually. Like, does that excite you so much, knowing that you're going to have that fan backing? That that's a, that was a deal breaker for me, you know, coming in the program. Like it's a lot of risk leaving everything behind the amateurs where everything's paid for, your own funding, you know, just to go and risk it. Yeah. But that was that's what I want to do. I want to fill out places like that and just have something to look back on and be be proud of what I've done and stuff like that. Like and just if I didn't go for it, you know, I would, I would always regret it, I think. So I'm just that's what that's the reason I went for it. Hundred percent, mate. Well, we can't wait to follow your career. I'm laughing here, thinking if anyone's watching this on YouTube and they're wondering my column, <laughs> he's not being a wee attention seeking bastard by flipping in and out of the call. Is uh, he's in New York and his Wi Fi's fucked. So this uh, is the problem doing Zoom interviews, like. But uh, <laughs> McCourt's in London. I'm in Manchester, and he's in Belfast. So. I could have, I could have just come around here, Gavin, done a court. Would have just been my life. Would have been much easier. Had ran on Facetime. <laughs> <laughs> You could have sat in mixed bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, Kurt, uh, no, honestly, we can't wait. We, we'd, we'd spoke about getting you on for months. I think uh, I said you blocked the overnight at fucking... <laughs> <laughs> like, man, we need to get you on. But uh, no, we were waiting. We wanted to wait until it was announced. You're, uh, uh, there's an always a lot of hype about you at the minute. So thank you so much for coming on, mate. And we'll, we'll no definitely problem. get you on in a few months. Yes, good lads. Appreciate it, lads. Top man, mate. Absolutely. Yes, man. Right. So, See you later. See in a bit, mate. Big thanks to Wow Hydrate who have sponsored the podcast. They've provided me and the lads with some of their protein and vitamin waters along with their electrolyte drinks which are the best on the market. Thanks for your continued support. We really appreciate it. Call that white girl problem. Let her back in autumn. Every gift I try to get her, she already got him. Messing with the TA, wonder what she taught him. Work her way down, literally to the bottom. Where are all my best friends? I cannot ignore them. Never gonna text them. I am too important.